If you saw the video the other day when I went down to where the smart wood shop is and tried to work on a perfect design with this clamp and a pocket hole, and then it didn't quite work out. It got a little too complicated and not what I like. So I came back to SketchUp and I'm working on a couple of ideas. Tell me what you think. Two options here. So you can see the structure. I'm gonna turn the structure off. So first I came up with this idea of just drilling a big hole, but uh, it would interfere too much and wouldn't work out well. So I went to two smaller holes and then putting these um, cutouts basically. I'd have to make two different sizes because the hole that I would cut with a hole saw, the, the plugs that came out would be too small to be these. So I'd, I'd have to work that out. Um, but you can see here if I grab this and move it out. So basically, I would insert the extension in through. I'd have to tip it because these this front edge would have to come past uh, these here and then kind of snap it in. It'd be pretty easy to put these in the right location. I'd just stick this in, uh, have these holes drilled, have these made, stick this in, clamp it in place, and then just slip these up and put them in with a screw. And I wouldn't uh, glue them or pin them. I'd just use a screw, maybe double screws, maybe move uh, the whole offset. Working it out, so that's just kind of where I'm at. I'm not 100% sure that it would Grab work. Grab the rotation tool, and let's click right to where the pivot would have to be. And then let's rotate it up. I, I'm just randomly rotating it up. So it would have to slide in and then drop in. So it's possible it would work. I'd have to do make a little mock-up in the field and test it out. Next option I thought about was doing like a dovetail. So I'm gonna turn off the structure again. And so basically what I would do is take the end of the extension and this is already where it was i mean i made some adjustments i shortened it it's overall the same length but i had to shorten it up a little bit to make this tail a bit longer but i you know again this is test and so where i'd end up i'm not sure so basically um i would create a dovetail on the end of it and then i would take these uh sub mounts these are the ones that uh these here are the you know they're spaced by half an inch and this is what holds up this changeable fence remember i'm setting this up so that we can build it in the shop and install it or we can then remove it and get the one from fast cap and put it in so that's why this is kind of like that so so these are mounted and so this would be screwed in from underneath so so basically i would come in and put these dovetails on the end of part of the mount. And of course, those would have to be modified, squared off, if the um, fast cap uh, best fence was used. Slide it in and then rotate it down for it to kind of snap in. I'm gonna hit the move key and just slide this out in the direction of that angle. So it would have to come in through that notch in the structure. I'm gonna turn the structure back on. And so you can see it sort of hits that. So I'd have to, tip it a little bit so this bottom edge here slipped past but then once i got in i could work it back up a little bit have it just rotate and the the downside to this is that we're depending on wood for alignment again we're going to have the hardware up here and we want the scale to always be very very accurate this is a no hardware option so this gonna would save some costs now i have another option if you watched that last video in the shop you saw that i had to bend this hook to try to get it to go in well instead of that i've recessed the clamp so basically cut a rectangle i had to do the whole thing because the handle and all needed to drop in i couldn't just do the base again i'd work this out in the shop but basically this would be kind of nice in the sense on the bottom it'd be attached to the bottom of the bench so it would make it a little more flush and but i would be mounting this base in only the 12 millimeter plywood and i don't know if screws would be good enough i may want to um, bolt those through and uh, it doesn't matter if they're nuts sticking out on the bottom plenty of room for that uh, but on the top i would need to make the um, the bolt heads i would have to use uh, maybe a bugle head 
and recess it into the surface. So I'm kind of liking this idea. This is taken on where we were at, but just recessing it. Now, I want to address an issue. A lot of people said, oh, you know, this, try this and that and the other thing. There's not a lot of hardware that works with my criteria. This is the extension. The extension is flush all the way around. There's nothing sticking out. If I use any kind of cam clamp or anything that has to have a receiver on this end, it would have to mount on this surface. And now it's sticking out. And then the structure on the side would have to be notched so they could slide in. But also it'd be sticking out. It'd be something to bump, something to... I, I, I don't want that. It's it, everything. The bench is flush and the extension, everything is flush. And I, I don't want any protrusions for storage, for moving it in and out of houses. And so, and you can see because this is open on the other side, there's no way to recess one because if I cut away any material to recess it, there's nothing there but air. Other suggestion is one of those cam clamps that you dado in to both sides. And then they're kind of a cam clamp and you just have a... a um, kind of a, an Allen key up here and you turn it and that looks fantastic but we're going into 12 millimeter and it's just strictly 12 millimeter here and strictly 12 millimeter there so there's just not thick enough I have a, a certain criteria because I know what works in the field these are portable um, mobile I got to get them up and down stairs and around tight corners and all and I don't want anything catching or, or grabbing or bumping or scratching and when I store them in the trailer, I don't want to have to deal that with that. That is where I'm at. What I'm going to do, I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about, I'm leaning this way, but, you know, I'm going to uh, finish up this model, hopefully, and get down to the shop and get it built. I've got a lot of stuff coming up, and if I don't get this going here pretty soon, it isn't going to happen this year. But once I go down to the shop, um, and Bill, you know, I'll have most of the model, you know, 98%, I'll know what I'm going to do. Because it's, it's going to match the previous one pretty close, and that's a proven concept. So there's just a few ma major changes. I mean, how I'm doing this to kind of prepare for the fast cap possibility. Um, and uh, a couple of other things. The lightweight doesn't change the design. That just makes it lighter. And just better looking then and nicer. Material. I would want to have built it in the shop and work the bugs out like I've done with all my plans. I don't put out a set of plans until I've built it. And then I come back and do what I call as built, where there are either modifications I made or things that I wished I would have done that I then modify because I want the plans to be the best of my abilities at that time with what I know or you know twenty dollars I think for the for the total station in my world that's not a lot of money but in a lot of people's world that is a lot of money and so I want to make sure that it is all there and buildable and clear and if I can make it a little bit better um, in the plan that I actually own and work with in the shop then I want to do that as well I you know I want to make it a good value I want to make it so that you know, there's a lot of guys, a lot of us, men and women, they figure things out in the field. But if I can save tens of hours, hundreds of hours to, to trial, test and error and cutting the materials and stuff where you can just build it the way it is, then um, then there's value there. And, and that's really what my goal is to make sure that it's an excellent uh, value. I would not be doing this if I had not sold the the uh, awesome rolling toolbox and and the uh, total station went with it. That's the only motivation because I had no problems with the other one. It worked well. So this one just be lighter. I'm not going to have the table saw support on this one. So I'm going to keep the total station. The PTS plans are going to stay. These are not going to replace those. I'm going to both because there's a lot of people that still want to have the table saw hanging and some other things. Uh, so, and it's very popular. So I'm going to make sure I keep that out there and I'm going to add this in. So it'll be the PTS and the PTSU. Okay, guys. Well, there it is. If you like these videos, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Most important, share the channel with others. And if you want a set of plans, you can click on the link right here in the video or in the description down below. 
And as you know, I have an Amazon store also in the video description down below. If you use it, they don't charge you any extra, but they share a bit with us, which supports the time it takes to make these videos. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.